Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda, the spirit of Bermuda. Today on Golf Destination, we look at some nine hole courses in some seaside communities in Massachusetts. We visit a town owned golf course that is having a renaissance of sorts. Golf management companies have many roles and we'll learn a little bit about the many hats they wear. All of that and more next. Welcome to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm your host, Meredith Gorman. When you bring up nine hole courses to golfers, they usually have a strong opinion about them. That's why we decided to dedicate an entire show to nine hole courses. The first one up is what many consider to be one of the best in the world. The Donald Ross designed Whitensville Golf Club in Whitensville, Massachusetts. Whitensville is just over the Rhode Island line and is home to one of the top nine hole courses in the world. Nestled in the Blackstone Valley, it is a true hidden gem. Like most nine hole routings, a variety of tees can alter the course so it plays as an 18 hole layout. Whitensville Golf Club can be stretched as an 18 hole layout to over 6,400 yards with a course rating of 71.2 and a slope rating of 139. The course was designed by Ross in 1923 and the layout looks the same today as it did when it first opened. In 2009, Gil Hans designed a master restoration plan aimed at recapturing many of the characteristics of Ross original design. The club is nearly complete with the project and the results are stunning. The course retains many of the typical Ross qualities, smallish mounded greens with devilish sloping, run up areas to the front of most greens, challenging par threes, and it is very penal to those who go long their approach. In classic Ross style, he lets you warm up with the only par five on the course, which is a 578 yard walk that ends with a very undulated raised green that is treacherous. The second is a classic Ross par three of 185 yards to a well protected green. Out of bounds down the right side in the tee box encourages you to bail out left on the par four third but those who can hit it down the right side will be rewarded. The par 4 fourth is at the highest elevation of the property. Looking to cut off the dog leg, we'll need to hit it over the chocolate drops on the left side. The fifth has a blind shot with a cross bunker in the fairway, so don't push it left. Ross's optical illusions are in full effect here. This hole features the largest green on the course. Stay to the right side of the fairway on six and just don't hit it into the strategically placed mounds. The approach is over a hidden burn to a protected green. The seventh is another par three over 180 yards. Don't be short or your ball will roll 25 yards down to the fairway, leaving a difficult pitch. A right to the left ball flight off the tee on the par 4 8th could help you get a late round birdie. Then you step onto the ninth tee, which is a hole that Donald Ross said was one of his favorite holes he ever designed. Golf Magazine listed it as one of the top 100 holes in the country. You must carry a hazard on your tee ball. Bunkers flank both sides of the green and it also offers a false front to the green. Crenshaw was correct when he called this course a hidden gem, one of the top nine hole courses in the world. 
From a hidden gem to an American classic, one of the United States' true Lynx courses, Highland Lynx on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Highland Lynx was founded in 1892, making it the oldest golf course on Cape Cod. It was part of a hotel and cottage resort owned and operated by Isaac Small and his family. When the original sand greens were converted to grass, Francis Wiemed opened the greens with an exhibition. Famed British journalist Alistair Cook once stated that Highland Lynx was the perfect example of British and Scottish Lynx in the United States. It's a simple place that harkens back to a simpler time. It's a minimalist golf course before minimalism became all the rage in golf course design. No irrigation system, just fescue, heather, wildflowers, and scrub pines nurtured by Mother Nature and all of her fickle behavior. The working lighthouse on the course was forced to move in 1996, but after being dark for 18 days during the move, it was lit again on November 3rd, 1996. This nine-hole course measures just over 2,500 yards, but it can prove to be a stern test of golf. The club you use one day can change dramatically the next day. The course is set in such a unique and idyllic setting. From the first tee, you see several FAA flight domes from a World War II surveillance station. The second hole is one of our favorites in New England. A memorial to the famed 19th century opera singer Jenny Lind serves as a backdrop as you stand on the elevated tee. You hit into the valley on this par 5 that is not long, but an accurate tee shot is required or your ball will vanish into the gorse. You stand on the tee on the uphill par 3 third hole and can't help but appreciate that this is what the founders of golf imagined back in Scotland. The sixth hole is a 464 yard par five that is either an easy birdie or a difficult par depending on the wind. The ninth hole is just a 130 yard par three, but one that was once chosen by Sports Illustrated as one of the best short par threes in the country. The omnipresent lighthouse beautifully frames the background, but the beauty turns devilish when you approach the green. A severe two tiered green just beckons you to three putt. When you play, make time to visit the historical museum adjacent to the course as it has some great photos and history. Highland Lynx is pure golf that embodies the spirit of golf. Up next, we continue down the Mid Cape Highway and visit a Styles and Van Cleek course. And we stop by the quaint seaside village of Chatham to get yet another nine in when golf destination continues. In the heart of New England is the country's finest four season sporting club and residential community, the Preserve Club and Residences, a 3,500 acre backyard the whole family can enjoy for generations. Sporting clays, golf, spa, hunting and more. Adventure, exclusivity, serenity. The Preserve Club and Residences, the adventure you always wanted, the luxury you've earned. Now offering stay and play packages. Call now to reserve your stay today. A one of a kind combination. The delicious taste of Bermuda's national cocktail, the Dark and Stormy, in a trendy and convenient 8.4 ounce can ready to drink. The sleek cans are perfect for golf, boating, the beach, or any cooler or fridge. Pop open a cold Dark and Stormy can and have an instant party. Glass and ice are optional because it's frigid and flavorful. Enjoy, because things could get wild.
if sweat is your body's natural way of cooling itself down, then condensation is a beer's natural way of saying, drink me. Michelob Ultra, superior light beer. This segment is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda, the spirit of Bermuda. Welcome back to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm your host, Meredith Gorman. Now let's head over to the bay side of Cape Cod and check out the Chequested Club in Wellfleet. Chequested Yacht and Country Club is located in the town of Wellfleet on Cape Cod. This nine-hole course was designed by the famed architectural team of Stiles and Van Cleek in 1929. This popular nine-hole track is a fun place to play, offering some great views of Cape Cod Bay. The first hole is a downhill par 4 that measures 234 yards. It has an ample landing area and the green is ripe for the taking. The second is a straightforward par 3 of 127 yards to a rather large green. The third hole is a 368 yard par 4 in which you hit from an elevated tee box. Bunkers protect the left and right of the fairway. Your approach is to an elevated green. A bunker awaits shots that are hit long, and you should take a moment to enjoy the view of Cape Cod Bay. The fourth is the only par 5 of the nine holes and measures over 440 yards. It also begins on an elevated tee and is a slight dogleg right. Be careful because a hazard creeps in on the right hand side. Five is a short par 3 playing only 109 yards uphill. You probably won't be able to feel how strong or soft the breeze is blowing from the tee box, so choose your club wisely. A deep bunker protects the left side of the elevated green. The sixth hole is a par 4 of 314 yards. Be careful off the tee as a stream bisects the fairway, catching those who attempt to run it up to the green. The seventh is a demanding par 4 of 373 yards. Bunkers line both the right and left side of the fairway, and a hazard awaits in the fairway. Eight is the longest par four on the course, and the fairway narrows as you get closer to the green. The green is cut into a hollow, and it slopes from left to right. The ninth hole is a par four that has a tree and hazard planted squarely in the middle. Choose which side of the fairway. Two bunkers lie about 20 yards in front of the green, which has very little movement. If you've played a Styles and Van Cleek course, you realize that when they designed this layout, it was for the enjoyment of all, not just private club members or skilled players. It's in a beautiful vacation waterside community that is also very eclectic. Those who enjoy Chequesset Yacht and Country Club also partake in other summer activities, including sailing and tennis. So the golf is just part of this secluded location that has been enjoyed for nearly 100 years. Chatham, Massachusetts is a popular vacation destination. Their nine-hole course, the Chatham Seaside Links, runs through the magnificent property of the Chatham Bars Inn. Chatham Seaside Links will never host a U.S. Open or even a qualifier. It's a simple place, expertly run, where people from all ages play golf in the glow of Cape Cod sunshine for two hours and then enjoy everything else that the Cape has to offer. So this is a uh, very unique location, being across the street from uh, one of the biggest hotels uh, on Cape Cod, you get all walks of life. Uh, you get family, you get friends, uh, you get Harry Connick Jr., uh, Coach Brad Stevens from the Boston Celtics has been uh, known to play here as well. So really you just get the full, the full spectrum of uh, clientele. There are no, no par fives at this course, all par threes and fours, just over uh, 2,200 yards from the tips. Four sets of tees for all levels of play. Again, whether you're just trying to get in a quick nine or, uh, or on a family vacation, it's a great little track to get out and spend some time. The course was originally built in 1895 and recently has had work done to several tee boxes by the team from Johnson Golf Management. The longest par four measures only 327 yards, so if you ever wanted to feel like Bryson DeChambeau and drive a par four, it could happen here and that's okay. The greens are a little bit on the smaller side. It's kind of a link style type course. Uh, you have some open fairways, uh, not too many blind shots. It's a pretty straightforward course, but again, uh, it's, uh, it's a great to just kind of tune up your game, or if you're a beginner, great place to learn how to play golf. I like hole number six best. 
Uh, you get a little blind shot leading up into the green, sand traps up front. Uh, when you get up to the green, if you look over to the left, you can see a little bit of the Atlantic Ocean as well. Chatham Seaside Links is a place where you introduce or develop a love for the game. It's a place where a spouse slips out for a couple of hours while their better half shops or even goes to the beach. It's really about the vibe, which is what every golf course should be. Fun outdoor activity where you can make birdie and you really don't care if you make a bogey. Situated next to the celebrated Chatham Bars Inn, a quick walk over to the veranda and you'll be enjoying your favorite libation while looking out over anchored fishing boats and sandbars, reminiscing about the drivable par 4 you murdered or a birdie on the par 3. All in all, it will be a good day because at the end of the day, it's just golf. Up next, we go off Cape to another popular summer destination, Duxbury, Massachusetts, and their fun nine-hole layout, when golf destination continues. Thought of mixing my award-winning black seal rum with any old ginger beer? Drove me to this. Gosling Stormy Ginger Beer. Perfectly made to make the perfect dark and stormy. In the heart of New England is the country's finest four-season sporting club and residential community, the Preserve Club and Residences, a 3,500-acre backyard the whole family can enjoy for generations. Sporting clays, golf, spa, hunting, and more. Adventure, exclusivity, serenity. The Preserve Club and Residences, the adventure you always wanted, the luxury you've earned. Now offering stay and play packages. Call now to reserve your stay today. There's actually a way to improve on Gosling's slowly aged Black Seal Rum. Added to Gosling's finely spiced ginger beer. Result, a trademark dark and stormy. Consumers today are bombarded with millions of marketing messages every day. Outbound marketing like interpretive ads, direct mail, cold calling just don't work anymore. The sociable approach to marketing attracts individuals to your product by developing unique programs, postings, video series, and content delivery across all your social media platforms. Content that they enjoy and will convert them into lifelong customers. Let's start trending sociably. Sweat is your body's natural way of cooling itself down. Then condensation is a beer's natural way of saying, drink me. Michelob Ultra, superior light beer. This segment is brought to you by Now we head over to the seaside town of Duxbury and check out its nine-hole course, North Hill. So North Hill is uh, like a four sets of tee boxes, all level of play, very challenging. It's got some wide open fairways. Uh, you can use every club in the bag. So again, whether you're uh, whether you want to challenge yourself or you're just looking to pick up the game of golf is a uh, great, great layout. We actually uh, refer to it as one of the hidden gems in the, uh, in the South Shore. My favorite hole at North Hill is hole number one. Uh, you get a nice opening par five. Not the hardest hole, but uh, plenty of challenges. Never usually get a, a true, true uh, flat lie. So you can use any club in your bag and, uh, and it is a little bit of forgiving. So if you, if you don't keep it in the middle of the fairway, you do have a little bit of forgiveness. A couple of sand traps up front, left and right. 
Well, we do have a lot of, uh, a lot of regulars from the town that, uh, that play that course frequently, and the population there is growing. But we do get a wide variety of outside golfers as well. Like I said, it is kind of a little hidden gem in, uh, in Duxbury. Uh, you, it's a nine-hole public course. We do have the Yacht Club, which is an 18-hole private course right up the street. And you also have Marshfield Country Club, which is an 18-hole private course on the town next over. But uh, it's really the only, uh, only real nine-hole nine muni course in the area. Yeah, town of Duxbury, it's a great, uh, great seacoast town. You got a, uh, the longest wooden bridge on the east side of the Mississippi. It has a uh, special place in my heart because that's actually where I, uh, where I grew up. Uh, I had the, was the pleasure of playing for Foster Cast, the uh, late soccer legends uh, back in the day, and I also uh, it's where I met my wife. Johnson Golf Mansion's been around since 1988. Uh, Late founder Doug Johnson passed away about back in 2014. He started the uh, started the company. We do everything from soup to nuts. Joe Extra, my director of uh, operations, does an excellent job with his staff maintaining the golf courses in an, in an ever challenging and changing uh, atmosphere up here in New England. We really are a family, a small family run business. You know, my wife and I run it with uh, with the help of Joe Extra, the director of operations. We really kind of like to fit into the communities that we're that we're part of you know most of our courses we do have one private the others are all uh, municipally run or municipally owned and run courses uh, all of them are uh, very family friendly uh, we try to bring you know private club conditions with public municipal prices so what we do is when we come into a place we kind of take a look at uh, the overall uh, view you know what the type of relationship is with the with the private owners or the municipalities what is their master plan what is their goal uh, what has been successful in the past and then we kind of come in and uh, and try to mirror that and just make it a little bit better like any business there's always uh, new challenges old challenges you just kind of have to adapt to that golf industry can be uh, extremely rewarding and extremely volatile at the same time. Um, you know, we've been around, like I said, since 1988. We're one of the premier golf management companies in New England, um, whether it's just maintaining the course or running the whole uh, operation like restaurant and bar from soup to nuts. For more information on Johnson Golf Management, go to www.johnsongolfmanagement.com. You can check out all our current locations. And if you're interested in, uh, in us taking a look at your facility, please feel free to contact us. Up next, we meet some brave souls who golf year-round in New England, when Golf Destination continues. A one-of-a-kind combination, the delicious taste of Bermuda's national cocktail, the Dark and Stormy, in a trendy and convenient 8.4-ounce can ready to drink. The sleek cans are perfect for golf, boating, the beach, or any cooler or fridge. Pop open a cold, dark and stormy can and have an instant party. Glass and ice are optional because it's frigid and flavorful. Enjoy, because things could get wild. This segment is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda, the spirit of Bermuda. Gulf Stream comes by here, we generally drop rain here instead of snow. So you can get out on the course down here in the Cape where even just south of Boston, they might be snowed in, but down here you can play. 35 degrees we're playing in. And when the ground freezes, you bring a hammer with you and <laughs> hammer the tee into, yeah. the, into the ground. The ball doesn't go as far. It doesn't compress as much, it's a little colder. The ball will bounce further because it's icy. And the trouble is you got to wear a lot of clothes, so it's hard to swing. If there's no snow in the fairways, this course is always open. Last winter we played at least once each month. 
surprisingly, here on Cape, the greens stay soft. I just hit a shot earlier on a par three and got four or five feet of backspin. You have a lot of liaisons, so that kind of restricts your swing a little bit too. And then, but you have to compensate. The greens are frozen a little bit, so sometimes it'll bounce like a Super Bowl and bounce to the back. We use more club, maybe two, three club more. This is like going to Ireland and finding the best weather. <laughs> Look at the condition of this course. It is perfect. It looks like they just trimmed the greens. There's an advantage on the water holes. The water's frozen, so the ball keeps going. It's still a lot of fun. I mean, goodness gracious, the TV and the boob tube and all that, that doesn't do you any good. All my friends are trying to get me to go to Florida, but I like the winter. It's limited here on Cape Cod, so you want to get all the full swings you can before it, that snow hits us, it's headed our way. Thanks for joining us on Golf Destination, and be sure to check us out online at golfdestination.tv. I'm your host, Meredith Gorman, and we'll see you next time on Golf Destination. Goslings of Bermuda, the spirit of Bermuda. The preserve at Boulder Hills, club and residences. New England's most amenity-rich Four Seasons lifestyle community. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming.